Hi everyone, it's Jeanette here from The Sewing Studio. Welcome to another tutorial, which today I'm going to be doing one of my other favourite blocks, and I'm going to keep saying that, which is Jacob's Ladder. Now I've been wanting to do a Jacob's Ladder quilt for quite a while now, so I've got the opportunity to do it. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Now the fabric I've chosen for this one is, um, it's a Ruby Star Society one called Speckled. And it's this, let me put it in under the close-up so you can see. So it, it goes from this really, there is some really black blacks in there into like the navy blues, round into the, so there's a, a grey blue, like a slate blue there. Um, and then right round, so it's a lovely rainbow of colours into sort of oranges and reds and pinks. Uh, and then some other sort of uh, like a limey yellow, I suppose that is, and some lights. Now, what I will say is I've actually taken the really light fabrics out of this. I'm not using that in this block because I don't think there's quite enough contrast. And I've already uh, taken out the black blacks. There, there was two black black squares in there and I, I felt they were just a little too dark for this quilt. But I'm going to be using all the rest of the rainbow of colours. So that's what I've been using. Now we've also got this um, here on, as yardage on the bolt. So if you just wanted to pick out some of your favourite colours from all of those, so for example, I'm a bit of a magpie for blue. So if I wanted to do sort of, I've been doing sort of putting the blues and the greys and the greens together here, you could just get some fat quarters and do it all from that and just have a, a more limited uh, colour range. But I'm actually going to use most of the co colours, like say with the exceptions of the very lights and the very, very black ones that are in there. So let's have a look at the blocks. Now you need a little bit more than one layer cake for each of the blocks. From each of the layer cakes, you will get the half square triangles and four of the four patch blocks, but you need a fifth four patch block. So you need a little bit of extra fabric, which is why I decided to do sort of scrappy four patches because I felt that that was gonna give me more use uh, of the fabrics that I've got in the layer cake. So let me show you how I uh, decided to do this. So from a layer cake square, the first thing I did was took that and I actually cut off a five inch piece. And these are gonna be for the half square triangles. And there will be enough on that five by 10 inch piece to make the four half square triangles we need for each of the blocks. So I'm just going to take off a five inch strip. And I'm going to set that aside for now. And then with that remaining fabric, I'm going to cut two, two and a half inch strips. And these are going to be for the four patches. And these, as I said, will make four, four patches. So I'll get two, two inch strips from that. So that's what we're going to do to each of our, our 10 inch uh, squares. And then from our background fabric, I, I got about two meters, and this is just a, um, a Moda Bella solid called porcelain. I cut it into two and a half inch strips and five inch strips. Now I'm not quite sure how many blocks I'm gonna get from this, because as I say, I'm not working from a pattern. So I just cut a few at a time, make a few blocks and sort of keep going until I know exactly sort of the quantities I, I've uh, want. So I think there's about seven or eight strips there, but I say I've already started making some blocks. And then from these strips, we're gonna do the um, four patches first. I'm just gonna take these and I'm literally just going to sew these onto here. So I'm gonna take them to the machine and just feed them through. Now you'll actually get four. So I've got a couple of others here that I've cut from um, other squares. So I will put all of that and cover that whole width of fabric strip with four of the two and a half by 10 inch squares. So let's go and do that first. So I've left the selvage on. I don't need my starter scrap because that in effect will work as my starter scrap. Now I've also got um, this seam guide. Um, this Bernina machine comes with this lovely seam guide, which I don't always use because this is the patchwork foot that comes with it as well. Um, but I find if I'm doing sort of a long length, this is really handy to, to keep my quarter of an inch um, accurate. So when we get to the end there, um, we're just gonna add the next strip on and keep going. Okay. 
Okay, so you'll get four of your 10 inch lengths onto one with the fabric strip. And then whilst they're still closed, I tend to cut them to size. Now, once I get it to that, then I start cutting it into my two and a half inch uh, pieces, sub cutting it. So you can just go along the strip. Now you could sort of stack some of these, but you know, you do lose, you get what you gain in speed, you lose in accuracy sometimes. So I tend to just, you know, we're not in any rush uh, or I'm not in any rush. And then that's just a little bit of waste. So I will just go through and then let me just cut some of these darker ones as well. Let's take off this mid blue one. I'm liking the look of that one. So I just went through, um, I don't know, maybe about 10 of my layer cake squares, maybe a bit more, and just cut all the component bits. Now, I get a bit bored. So, you know, some people like to assembly line sew and sort of do all of that step and then go to the next step. But I get a bit bored with that. So I, I sort of change it up a bit. I do a few and then I'll change onto something else and then I'll come back to it. I find I... Um, my mind doesn't get quite so bored that way. So I made lots of little units just like this. And at this stage, I just finger press them open. I'll just do a couple here and then I'll bring in. I love this fabric with the gold speckles. It's, it's lovely. As I said, I'm a bit of a magpie for blue. So uh, this is right up at my alley. So I'm just finger pressing to uh, the darker fabric. So I just made a whole set of different colors. So I'll bring some other ones in here that I've done. So you can see there's some light blue ones. There's like this, say that gray. And then I just made some different four patches. So let's use, I don't know which one, that lovely. Uh, maybe that dark with a bright blue. So then we just make that into a four patch. So I'm just going to match up that seam. And then take it to the iron and sew that. Now I've got some others here that I've already started to assemble and I've got one I've assembled. So as I said, you need five for each of your Jacob's ladders and I think that should give me five here. So I'm going to take those to the machine and sew all of those to make my four patch unit. So I've got my starter scrap again, and like I say, I'm just gonna put these through. See, as soon as I put the pin in, I take it out again. Right, anyway. So we've come back from the iron and I'm just gonna snip these apart. Let's say normally if I was doing this, I would sort of make loads of four patches and keep chaining them through. And then I'm just going to do the little trick where we open up that center seam just by pushing the seams around. And at this point, I just finger press. I quite often do uh, with block assembly. I don't, I don't often take it to the iron until right at the end. Um, there's less, unless it needs to be, you know, particularly ironed a certain way, but I find the four patches behave quite well. You know, sort of heat on your fabric can distort things a bit. So uh, I just finger press at this stage. If you've got one of the seam rollers, they work really well. But I quite often just use my fingernail And I do it from behind and then flip it over. And then finger press it from the front. And also I tend to find once you've put the heat on fabric, you sort of set it in place a lot more. 
So when it comes to block assembly, if you haven't introduced any heat to that, there's still a little bit more ease in the fabrics. If I do need to just, just encourage things to fit a bit more, they can. So that's my five scrappy four patch blocks ready to go into my blocks. So now we can turn our attention to the half square triangles. Now I'm just gonna move those two and a half inch strips out the way for the minute. Let's put them under there. So I'm gonna to go to my five inch strips and I'm gonna cut these, I'll take my five by 10 inch piece that we cut off our layer cake and I'm literally just gonna cut these into um, 10 inch pieces to fit, to fit the, let's tidy up, I get I'm a bit of a messy crafter. Um, and then, so I'm just gonna cut one But in, in real life, I would sort of assembly a few of these. But like I say, I don't do loads because I, I get a bit bored doing one thing all the time. So 10 inch piece. Don't have to be super accurate with these because we're going to be making half square triangles, which we're going to trim down. So let's just put that to one side for the moment. And then I compare this up with our layer cake. I'm going to flip it round so that the uh, light fabric is on top. And then we're going to draw some lines. So we're going to make half square triangles. Now you could cut these into five inch squares and draw a diagonal line and so either side. But for these, what I tend to do, and I don't know if this is any quicker or not, is measure across five inches draw a line and then diagonal line corner to corner. Now you could either do a triangle, which I think I will do. Now because I was assembly line sewing, I actually did two diagonal lines like that because I could just keep feeding them through the machine. But if you're just doing one, it's probably a bit more efficient if you work that way. So that's the, let me just clear that out of the way a minute and just hold that in under the close up. So you can see there, we've got the diagonal lines and the line coming down to the center. I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch either side of the diagonal lines. This center line will be a cutting line once we finish sewing. Oh. So let's just grab a couple of pins to hold those in place. And then we're going to take that to the machine. Okay, so I'm just going to do a slightly scant quarter of an inch on this one. So now we've got that sewn, sorry, I should also say, because when I was at the machine, I said a scant quarter of an inch. It just means slightly smaller than a quarter of an inch for anybody um, that hadn't heard that terminology before. So I'm going to cut up that center line and then along those two diagonals and we'll end up with our four half square triangles. Now we're going to take those to the iron and give them a press and then we can come back and give them a trim. So I'm going to put the darker fabric on top and uh, press towards the dark. So these need to be trimmed down to four and a half because our half square, no, our four patch, these are half square triangles, our four patches are four and a half. I don't know why I'm faffing with that. Right, four and a half. Now it's only just a li little bit. So I've got my uh, diagonal line following the seam. Just 
tiny little bit off the top there. So I'm going to do the same with all of these now. At home, what I did was just line them all up like so. And I could just move along. I don't know if it was any quicker, but it felt like it was. So let's say we're only trimming tiny, tiny little bits off, but that, that, all, that all matters, that all counts. So there we've got our four half square triangles, let's have a tidy up. And then we can lay out our blocks, block. Now I tend to start with the half square triangles and they just need to point towards each other. So like so, and like so. And then the four patches go in these areas. Now I'm just gonna show you this block because I actually did it, so my orientation was like that. And my solid squares, they're all going in the same direction and they chain up through the center. So let's put that like that. Which direction? That like that. And that's the block. So we can sew that together just like a nine patch now. So I always do right onto left. So middle row onto the first row. Let me just put a little pin. And then we can take all of that to the machine. I'm gonna keep those in order. And we're gonna sew those. So press towards the half square triangles. Now I've just pressed those seams to one side, but you could just as easily press them open and that would lay nice and flat. But there's our block, there's our Jacob's Ladder block. So let's have a look at some settings. Let's just have a little bit of a tidy up and then we can lay out these blocks because there's lots of different settings you can do with these. So let's just get rid of all of that. Let's get rid of And that. So 
So first setting, very easily, you can just do it in rows. Now I've got probably about nine blocks here now, so that gives us a nice idea of how things are going to look. These should come out at uh, 12 and a half, so 12, and a half, uh, 12 inch finished, sorry. So you can do, just do it so that everything is just going in rows, in lines. Probably gonna get a six on here, actually. Let's choose a different color. Let's choose that light, that light blue one. So you've got where it's going to form um, diagonal rows across the quilt. So there's that setting. You could also do it if we turned these where you start having chevrons going across the quilt. So that's another setting. Another one, and actually I'm gonna put a fourth on this because this will look better possibly in fours. You can have it, so let's put a different color there. Let's go to the same. Let's bring that color one in. So that you make, and let's just do that again. And I'm just gonna follow the orientation of the first one. So you can begin to visualize how this might look across the whole of the quilt. Might, let's move it that way a bit more. I don't know how much of this you'll get, but hopefully you can sort of see what that begins to do. So you can have these sort of circles here, but as they come together here, You'll, you'll form this cross and you can sort of do that so it goes down across all of, all of the quilt. Um, so that's just sort of three little examples of uh, settings for it. But there's lots of different ways you can play around with these blocks. There's also lots of different ways you can actually lay them out. Instead of putting the full patch in the centre, you could put a, di a different fabric in the centre and that would give you a different look again. Um, but I like these sort of secondary patterns that they begin to make once you put all these fabrics together. Now, the beauty of these is because if we didn't want that like that, we could just turn that block round and bring in some different colours there. Uh, the same with that one, look. We've got some different colours coming together there. Oh, we've got a grey. We could end up doing this forever, couldn't we? Playing around with blocks. So that's just some of the settings. But like I say, it makes a, a, a really quick quilt. Um, let's say layer cake. I'm not quite sure how many blocks you're going to get. As I said, you're going to you need one, one and half a strip for each of your blocks. But certainly, probably, you know, you'd get a good 30 blocks out of that. So a five by six, which is a, a decent size quilt from a layer cake. I've got some other colours I'm going to bring in. So mine aren't going to be all blue and green. But if you wanted blues and greens, like I said, we sell this, this fabric on the bolt. So you could just pick some fat quarters of the colours you like and put them in there but I'm going to do a mix of different colours. So I'm going to sort of go rainbow and that might influence what layout I decide. So we may need to do a little follow up video to show you what I decided, what, which, which layout I decided and how I decided to put all the different colours together. So you can see I've made nine blocks already out of the blues and greens. I've still got some more blues and greens left to do. So I'm going to add another one there. So I'm, I'm probably going to get I don't know, don't even know, to put at least probably 12 blocks out of the blues and greens. And I've got some remnant bits of, of half, uh, no, four patch. I keep kind of to all those half square triangles, four patch blocks. So I should keep going with as many blocks as I can get from those. And then once, as I said, once I've done blues and greens, I've got all these colours to do, which I'm probably going to group together in blocks with um, oranges and reds and pinks. And then my layout, I'll lay it all out. I may do rainbow um, and the, the, the layout and the colours will depend on how all the blocks look together and what looks best with the different colours being able to sort of merge them all in. So I'm going to have a great lot of fun carrying on doing those blocks. And as I said, we will do a follow up quilt. So you'll get to see how I decided to put the colour and how I decided which layout I thought looks best. And it will be a matter of me just playing, taking photographs and then just flicking back through and, and deciding which layout looks the best um, and I might poll some opinion here from some of the, the people here to see which uh, layout they, they prefer. So thank you, I hope you enjoyed Jacob's Ladder. Like I say, it's, it's a quilt block and a quilt I've been wanting to do for a little while now. So I'm really pleased I've been able to uh, get to do that here today. My homework is I'm gonna carry on and, and make some more blocks and uh, get this quilt put together. 
So thank you for joining me here again. If you give this block a go, if you give this quilt a go, please do share your photos with us. Um, like I say, people have been doing that and it's always fantastic to see what you're doing with some of these ideas. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, all those good things to support our channel if you so wish. And thank you for your time today and I hope you'll join me again here next time in the sewing studio.